Hi there guys, Dad Griffiths here. I appreciate it. it's been a long time uh, since I've put anything of this nature out. I hope you've all been very well and been enjoying the various cinematic offerings and award season and all the razzmatazz that comes with it. Uh, I felt that I wanted to reconnect in some way and it's a decent cause I, I would say. It's for LGBT History Month uh, and I wanted to indulge, if you'll let me, uh, about films that really struck a chord with me growing up uh, throughout my troubled teens and growing comfortable in my own skin and coming out as gay and all the rest of it. Uh, and the film I'm going to tackle today is Andrew Hayes' Weekend. It was released in 2011. Uh, the director, Andrew Hay, has become a, a firm favourite of mine over the last few years. He has a really subtle way of emotionally breaking you uh, and devastating you in some way. Uh, other films include Lean on Pete, which was last year, uh, with a wonderful performance from Charlie Plummer, and 45 Years with Charlotte Rampling and Tom Courtney. And he just has a real intimate way of capturing these really complex relationships and allowing these characters to feel really lived in with these long takes and really considered in its narrative. And it's quite glacial in pace a lot of the time, but you do really feel invested in these characters and feel emotionally absorbed uh, by what they offer. Uh, in this case, his directorial debut, it stars Tom Cullen as Russell and Chris Newers Glenn, a very handsome pairing I must say, and it's spread over a weekend as they have frank discussions about sex, relationships, that heteronormative narrative and now it's sort of all laid out uh, for the straights and it's a little bit more free-flowing uh for a homosexual narrative or a queer narrative which i'm always weary of using that word because i appreciate some really embrace it and some people are still it carries a lot of negative connotations for people which i completely understand um but why did i connect with this film uh first and foremost i saw it when i was 23 uh, a couple of years since it came out. It was on Channel 4 late at night. I was on my own. Uh, mentally, I wasn't in the best place at all. I wasn't long out of uni. Um, I was... Uh, my sexuality, because I wasn't out at the time, it was not necessarily the defining factor of why my mental health was sort of in the pits, but at the same time, it was a aspect of it that sort of contributed to not feeling so great about myself and in my own skin and weekend was an eye-opener for me a light bulb moment if you like and it really i hadn't seen gay characters depicted in such an authentic way that i really identified with before whether that's just me being quite secluded and not really exploring much within the queer cinema canon uh, beforehand that might have contributed to it but I really connected with these characters characters on an emotional level particularly with Tom Cullen's Russell he's very repressed he sort of lives within this grey area and I think Andrew Hay through his direction particularly in one particular sequence in a in a pool and he's on the sidelines. Uh, Russell is a lifeguard by trade and he sort of hats, stands on the sidelines and there's a deep end sticker on just behind him and there's numbers one, two, three, four, five, six scattered along and he's bang in the middle of it. And in a way, I feel like it represented him living within this grey area. He didn't quite know how to be more articulate in his emotions with many of his straight friends whilst him trying to forge his own identity within the gay scene and trying to forge his friendships and relationships with other gay men and Chris News character Glenn he's more artistic which of course I relate to being uh, studying film at university and I hadn't really known many people that you know, I thought connected to in an artistic sense, especially being a gay man as well. It and he's so frank about sex and and the way he talks about his art as well. He's doing an art in the film. He talks about an art project he's trying to set up, and he tapes the voice of Russell uh, straight after they've had sex the next morning, and it's so 
brutally honest in what he tries to drag out of Russell, but Russell's quite introverted. He doesn't quite know how to articulate it. And it's, I mean, for one example, for a better word, after Glenn brings up the fact that Russell didn't want to, and F1's going to be dropped, fuck him. He didn't feel comfortable with that. Uh, it sort of forges this idea of uh, masculinity and how fragile it can be and within the uh, LGBTQ community there sort of is these labels that are sort of placed whether like say if you're muscular you must be a top in a sexual sense or if you're quite effeminate or s slender in nature you must be a bottom or verse or whatever and it's sort of these connotations that we get very restricted in how we should be in a superficial sense or a sexual sense as a game and I think it the way it sort of tries to navigate it through the narrative and these really long take discussions is fascinating because it's really they are polar opposites but they seem to meet in the middle uh, with the characters and, and in the queer cinema sense I, I get this vibe as well in terms of Glenn talks about how you know, it's queer art. No one will come and see it in a gallery, exhibition space, on screen, on TV, whatever. And I definitely get a sense of that as well, uh, just talking about it with other people. And I think it's always carried the connotations that it's quite gratuitous and it's smutty. And uh, gay cinema has no substance beyond, you know, being quite explicit in its sexual nature, which for me is utter nonsense. But then when you look and how many films say break out from the festival circuit, which are, uh, carry these queer themes and, and it doesn't quite, they don't quite break out and they don't into a heteronormative society and they don't have many eyes clapped on that sort of specify or identify as straight. And these characters, and in a romantic sense, it's just, they are so authentic and I hadn't really seen anything like it at all. And for me, it was an absolute godsend at the time um, in terms of me being able to articulate myself and my fragile masculinity to a degree, because even in my late 20s, and happily admitting that I'm, you know, I haven't really been with a guy in my time. I feel more emotionally sound in terms of articulating my feelings, but at the same time, I do still feel quite introverted in how I handle things. And especially on the gay scene, it's a confidence thing with me. Like, I feel like I've abandoned it recently, which is awful. Um, and it's a very gradual process. Sometimes, I think the the negative aspect of coming out, some people seem to think that once you come out, all your problems just, you know, go like that. And it doesn't quite work like that for some of us. Uh, I mean, it's been a very gradual process for me. And I, that's why I really relate to Russell's plight in the film. And in terms of gradually trying to pluck up the courage to be yourself. And, uh, and you know, it's a longer journey for others uh, sometimes and the most beautiful thing about it by the end of the film Russell feels somewhat validated as Glenn uh, is about to go off to America uh, which is sort of the bombshell that he drops in the middle of the film uh, for an art course and sort of explores himself but, and Russell feels validated by the fact that he had he didn't know his parents and Glenn very beautifully pretends to be his dad. And for me, with father figures particularly, you know, it's very complicated. Uh, like my stepdad was a scumbag, quite frankly. I got forced into the, into the cadets when I was young and I, it was such a rotten time because I wasn't masculine enough for him. And, you know, and... It was just the rotten time of my life, and thankfully, as I, you know, I was sort of held out, and thankfully, I'm in this wonderful medium of film and really embracing it. Uh, but Russell feels validated, and you really do feel for him as they have this moment in bed, trying to sort of a little disorientated as they've not long woken up, and he basically says, "And I love you, and I'll be more, more prouder than the first man on the moon." And then, of course, the ending, which breaks my heart. Strangers on a train platform. And 
they for all the f run time that Russell doesn't quite feel like he can open up or hold hands or kiss another man he finally does it in public and whilst it's absolutely heartbreaking to see them go their separate ways it does feel like a memento and sometimes because there's such connotations this excellent when it's a bit more casual and and people don't think that you don't really necessarily warrant much from it or or get much from it uh especially in a on in the gay community i think we're more i personally think we're more switched on in terms of sexual health and educating people in that sense more than most people to be quite honest and I feel like that's a conversation that needs to be broadened out into a more heteronormative society. Um, but the film is just so frank, it's so authentic. I, th I can understand why over time it's gradually connecting more people. And I seem to have discovered more people that were really into it. And it really held a special place in the heart like it does with me. And I just adore the film and it was very much the film that made me go I need to open up and be more comfortable in my own skin and and if that and that's what cinema can do I mean people you know they always think oh it's just an entertainment aspect which is completely fine I get that but for me it's always been an art form that I've always felt like emotional catharsis I can really it broadens my horizons in a way that not many other things do and weekend very much did that for me and as a 29 year old gay man it's definitely it was definitely laid the foundations for me being a bit more open a bit more confident in my career choice in just general life and uh and that's pretty much it really um i hope you haven't minded me waffling on too much uh i appreciate it. it's probably a bit more scattershot and what i've tried to articulate about the film and how i personally connect with it uh it is the first one out for a while so i hope you've enjoyed this take on andrew hayes weekend um in terms of my written reviews you can check them out at jump cut online www.jumpcutonline.co.uk you can follow us on twitter uh, and of course on Facebook as well you can like our page uh, I'm looking to do a bit more of these uh, I have Mommy directed by Xavier Dolan uh, in the pipeline and I would personally like to tackle 120 BPM uh, brackets beats per minute which was my favourite film of last year and I think uh, the way that handles uh, the HIV epidemic I would really like to tackle that in terms of sexual health as well which I've sort of referred to earlier on i would love to try and tackle that in in a cinematic cinematic sense uh but i've been Daryl griffiths it has been lovely reconnecting with you all uh, and i will hopefully see you soon take care guys and see you later bye now